Hi, I'm Tim. Please join me in this video to talk about a fascinating airplane, the Black Fly. It's an all-electric, fixed-wing, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Let's get to it. I've been interested in airplanes and flying pretty much my entire life, and there's a wide range of aircraft types, missions, and, and what they do out there. It's always fascinating to see what else you can learn about flying. But this Blackfly aircraft that I stumbled upon about two years ago is one of the most unusual aircraft I think that I've seen. It's an all-electric aircraft, fixed wing, and uses eight electrical motors to achieve vertical takeoff and vertical landing. Developed by a Canadian, it was first flown in 2011, and it um, made its public debut in 2018, and has since been flown at the Experimental Aircraft Association's Air Venture Summer Air Show in 2021, where the public got to see it um, uh, perform in the air at the air show. This video is being filmed in November of 2023. The Blackfly is not for sale right now. It's an initial production, it's being made available to early access customers, cu customers that have experience flying a light Part 103 aircraft, presumably to work out any flaws with the system, and uh, hopefully it someday it'll be uh, for sale. We just don't know that at this time. The Black Fly is being uh, supported by Larry Page, the co-founder of Google. Uh, production facilities have been moved to Palo Alto, California uh, for the uh, trying to get it up to production. That's probably a pretty good idea because there's a lot of work to be done with advanced electric motors, batteries, and the computer that runs the whole aircraft. As you can see in the videos, the Black Fly flies. Um, the prototype has flown 10,000 miles and 30 mile hops many of these unmanned, um, so it's gone through extensive testing. What's interesting about the Black Fly is it's being built and flown under Part 103 of the FAA regulations. 103 is commonly um, uh, referred to or used for ultralight aircraft. For this case, it's a pretty good fit for the Black Fly. There are restrictions on weight and performance, uh, for example, can only carry one passenger. You have to fly in uncontrolled Class G airspace. You can't fly over populated areas. Populated areas. But one advantage of Part 103 is that there is minimal FAA oversight of the certification, as with a normal airplane that would need, that would need an airworthiness certificate. So there's a lot of maneuvering room for someone to build something as really revolutionary as the Black Fly. Also, as I mentioned, part of 103 regulations, it can only be a single occupant of the airplane. The whole idea of the ultralight regulations, part 103, these planes are for recreational purposes only. They can't carry any passengers, and they're just for that pilot itself. So one of the interesting aspects of the Black Fly is teaching people how to fly because there are no two-seat versions, and it's really unlike anything out there flying right now. The Black Fly, Fly folks have made a very um, uh, complete computer-based simulator with um, vision goggles and a special chair to help teach you how to fly. And talking to most of the instructors or listening to them uh, as they give their presentations, a pilot can be taught within 10 to 15 hours how to fly the Black Fly. But remember, when you go out for that first flight, you're literally flying it by yourself for the first time. The Black Fly is made from carbon fiber for light weight. Each wing is about 13 and a half feet in span. Each wing has uh, four motors on the wings. What I find very interesting about this and is relevant for this channel and the future of drones and electric powered models, to have a plane like this, you, you, just, you almost have to have electrical power. This would just be too hard to do with any sort of fuel com internal combustion engine just due to the weight and vibrations um, issues. Notice this is a true vertical takeoff, vertical landing aircraft. There are many planes out there that do vertical landings and takeoffs. There's usually three ways they do this. They either tilt the entire wing with the engines on it. These are typically called tilt wing aircraft. Another version is the tilt rotor uh, uh, aircraft. 
the wing is fixed in place, but the um, engines out on the tips of the wings typically rotate to do this. There are several test aircraft that have done this, and the V-22 Osprey is probably as well known as any of these aircraft. In addition, there are some jets that have vertical takeoff and landing performance, but they, um, like the Harrier or the um, F-35, but they rely on nozzles or very complex arrangements to, to deflect the thrust uh, downward uh, to, to achieve the vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. For the engines, for any sort of tilt wing or tilt um, motor application for uh, the vertical takeoff and landing, it's incredibly complex uh, gearing, engineering, uh, shafts for engine failure to go through to, to allow it to safely fly. That's why the use of the electric motors is so intriguing for something like this. So what they've done on the black fly, the motors are angled about 45 degrees. So when you take off, it'll immediately tip back 45 degrees to go straight up. And then when you want to go forward, it tips forward. You have a pretty good presentation as you're moving forward and the engines are providing a thrust for level flight. The takeoff and landing statistics are pretty impressive. It's three feet to take off and land. It can land on um, just regular ground, snow, and it can, is even advertised to land on fresh water if you wish to do that. The pilot controls everything with a joystick, joystick then a thumb controller for the altitude. It is a triple redundant fly-by-wire system. So a computer is working all the time for stability and to help the pilot control the aircraft in pitch, yaw, and roll. It's done by a combination of varying the engine thrust. There are elevons on the wings and there's differential thrust to help the model um, turn. But again, everything is worked through a computer. There are modes such as return to home, auto land, and geofencing to help you with your flying. Additionally, each one of the eight motors weighs four pounds. Each motor uh, produces 130 pounds of thrust, and there are two batteries for each motor. To achieve vertical takeoff, you can have a multi-rotor configuration, which is very simple but inefficient due to the number of engines, or the tilt rotor, which is complex with all the gearing and mechanics necessary to tilt the motors. So what the black fly does is have a flight, they just tilt the airplane to go up or straight ahead for cruise flight, keeping the wings fixed. You can see here it's uh, tilted up 45 degrees to take off and land straight up and straight down. The pilot's in the cockpit in the middle. When it touches down, it just levels off. And here's another view of the uh, airplane in flight. You can see it's really quite maneuverable as the uh, hand controller through the flight, where, uh, flight software computers uh, directs how the aircraft is going to fly. There's readouts for your altitude above the ground because you're kind of looking backwards for this, but you touch down and just roll out on the fuselage. Now the view of the airplane in flight, you can see it handles pretty well. Of course, electric flight is not going to go too far. This is all the learning stages of how to design something like this. Perhaps better known as a V-22 Osprey aircraft. Here you can see taking it off. This is a tilt rotor airplane. <clears throat> you notice the engines are slightly tilted forward for a rolling takeoff. This saves a lot of fuel for the takeoff. Very good for onboard carrier operations. The motors are pretty much straight up, pretty much a hover to touch down and land. And these are be being used for onboard carrier deliveries. The Black Fly is not a widely known model. I've not seen any examples of a radio control model of the Black Fly. Uh, somebody somewhere could probably build one that would really have to know what they're doing with the computers needed to control the motors um, uh, to fly this airplane, but it would make a very interesting um, RC model demonstration project. So the Black Fly is a fascinating example of the innovation that could be done by individuals, fairly small groups of teams, with the flexibility of electric motors to, to really create a new type of flying vehicle uh, like this one with the uh, fixed wing and the vertical takeoff and landing performance. The future for the Black Fly, I don't have the faintest idea. It's, it's uh, certified under part 103. It can go not much more than about 30 miles per hop and it's only allowed to fly with a single person. Can it be scaled up for additional seats? Don't know. But what I do know is it flies People did a lot of work for it. There's a lot of knowledge out there to get it to this point in development. That knowledge can pretty easily be used on other aircraft. And this is how a lot of this urban air mobility flying is done. You work with smaller prototypes, get the software, understanding all the control laws and logic. Then you can, you can apply it to bigger um, airframes if you wish to do. 
So again, it's just a fascinating aircraft to watch it fly. Uh, the uh, reviews of the pilots who fly it say it's extremely easy to fly and just a remarkable example of engineering and airmanship with another type of aircraft that's flying. Thank you.